Last time on Bark 101, folks, you got to see the crazy video schedule I'm keeping, and that doesn't even come close to including the feeding times and the outdoor play sessions and having to get supplies. But the fun part is all the loving, touching, and squeezing we get to do with these puppies. But the outings are important. They're really good socialization. And between lack of sleep and the holidays around the corner, I'm getting kind of punchy. Now let's go back a few days and let me bring you up to speed. The dogs had their first official outing in the front yard. Now we had to wait to about four or five weeks because these puppies don't have any shots. And we can't expose them to any other dogs but they might get the flu or parasites or anything else from another dog that might be passing by. So we have to kind of keep these puppies quarantined, yet still let them experience the joys of being outdoors. Leaves, grass, peeing and pooping outside, which is phenomenal, by the way, is all good interaction for the puppies. Well, hi there. <laughs> Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. Oh, you're all looking for me for lunch, huh? Like it's kind of crisp outside. It's in the upper 20s, lower oh, 30s. Happy. So they start to give a shiver now and again. And we got to hustle them inside. But let's stop here for a moment and if listen to some of my commentary from the day. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, run around. Yay! Yay! Hey there, folks. The puppies are outdoor for their second outing. Yay! They're running around, jumping, barking, leaping. Boy, they got energy. This is called atomic chaos theory going on right now. Look at that. Boink, boink, boink. Boink, boink, boink. Oh, you're talking to us. Can't be out here too long. It's kind of cold today. It's only about 22 degrees. So we're going to watch them real close. They start to shiver or slow down. They're in the house quick. But they're learning how to pee and poop outdoors. Oh, they're stretching their legs. They love it. They're working off their big lunch. They had a good two-hour nap with classical music and resting. And this is the result. Happy puppies. They still have that little bounce hop when they run. It's awesome. Boink, boink. Boink, 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 boink. Boink, 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 boink. Yay, puppies. And there's a puppy poo poo going on right there. Yikes. It's outdoors. Oh, there's another one. Ah! Okay, we'll focus on more pleasant things. Yay. So while I'm kind of punchy and low on sleep and running a little tattered, I have this illusion that I still have somewhat relative control of what's going on with the puppies. And then it happened. The great escape. But tonight we had the great escape. Now, let me show you how the puppies are now, currently. There they are after the great escape. But Jake and I just came home. We came in the house and dun, 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 dun. There goes a puppy by the door. Dun, 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 dun. There goes another puppy by the door. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? We come in the house and we've got a relatively large house, but there's Puppies down the hallway, puppies in the kitchen, puppies in the foyer, puppies in the office, and there's poop, 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 poop. And then down the hallway, there's poop. And in the kitchen, there's poop. And there's Jake helping me out clean the floor before our mom gets home. But it was all over and they stepped in it and we had little like dinosaur tracks, little puppy tracks. Boom, 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 all across the floor. And the doors were closed on my office and I had shirts thrown and bags are torn down 
in my hard drive, on my, on my cables, on my computer were tossed and turned. The innocent little children had done the great escape. And they were a free for all in the house. They covered some ground in those poopy paws, let me tell you. Took the puppies outside. They were all frisky because they'd been free running the house in the great escape. Fed them outside. Normally they pee and poop outside, but guess what? They don't have any poopy left because it's all in the house. But anyways, they escaped and they were running all over the house. And they were just, whoa, look at me, dad, whoa. They were darting. They were all over the place. Weren't they, Jake? All over the place. Yes, I walked in. I was like, Dad, there's a puppy. Then, like, three more came out of nowhere. I know. They were, like, all around the corners, and they were just free for all in. Now, the good news is Anka was here, so she had some kind of parental supervision that were the puppies. <laughs> we were gone. I was gone for about two hours, so I don't know if they were free for all for five minutes. They could have been a free for all for an hour. I don't know. I think they were free for a while because, again, they are hard out now. They are racked out. They were running hard. I guess no harm, no foul. But when you come in the door and you got dinner in your hands and you're going to sit down and eat your sandwich while it's nice and hot and fresh and you got puppies, chewing, chewing, chewing all through the house, you're just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So tonight was the great escape. All right, that's a puppy story. As we've discussed, the Hovavart is not for everyone. But if you do want a dog, I would highly suggest a German Shepherd. It's equal, like in size. And today we're going to head on down to White Star Kennels, where they raise, of course, German Shepherds. Historically, German Shepherds have been the number two, number three family dog in the United States, right behind the Labrador Retrievers. They're a good working class dog, known for herding, but they're also specialized for guarding, training, police work, and search and rescue. And boy, just like a hove of art, they're cute little puppies. Little tanks develop quickly, and in this whelping box, you can see they have the nice pig rails to also help protect the puppies from being crushed inside the whelping box. Oh, look at those precious faces, folks. But when they grow up, they are going to be roughly about the size of a hove of art, maybe a little bit smaller. They come in that the male is going to be 24 to 26 inches at the shoulder, with the females coming around 22 to 24 inches. They're going to live about 9 to 12, 9 to 13 years, and they're great dogs. They're really family-oriented, but again, you've got to socialize them. I also highly suggest you go to a proper breeder that looks at proper licensing with the state and county so they don't have too many dogs. That they look at the OFA for the hip and elbow evaluation. They look at the pedigree. They help look at the genetics of the dog and breed out hip dysplasia and other issues. But these little puppies are cute. And you're not going to get all the dogs from just small boutique breeders. But these are some of the things I look for when I'm trying to get a dog. The German Shepherd breed is very good at agility training and strong jumper. This also lends them to good search and rescue dogs and also guard and police dog. But moreover, they make a great family dog. They will protect and love on your family for years to come. But as a word of caution, with all larger size breed dogs and young children, they should always be properly socialized and supervised. But the German Shepherd's a great family dog, and it's also a fantastic companion dog. Keep in mind that the growth plates in puppies don't fully develop until about 18 months of age. In larger breeds could be as long as 24 months. So you want to be sure not to over exercise them, overrun them, or do too many stairs which could damage the plates 
and also lead to arthritis and hip dysplasia at full age. But once these dogs are developed, their strength comes from the hindquarters for a push and speed, and they stay on focus well. German Shepherds also come in short hair and long hair. They come in bicolors, blacks, but also have a string called a white German Shepherd, which I know a thing or two about because back in the day, I had one named Tiger Lily. Loved her to death. And here at White Star Kennels, they also have bred white German Shepherds. And today, we actually are here while they're relocating one of their dogs to the breeding program to a new homeowner. That's right, they don't breed these dogs and then put them down. They breed them, relocate them, find a nice healthy home that they're gonna be living a long, healthy, friendly, happy life. They're a very intelligent dog and need something to do. They need to have a purpose, just like a home of art. Don't put them on a chain outside all day and just ignore them. Give them a task. That's why they're so good for search and rescue. They're a very inquisitive dog. They're also very stable and self-assured. So if you want a good, stable dog that's gonna be a family dog for you, have a good life expectancy, I'd consider a German Shepherd. These puppies are really cute, but we can't forget about our loving Anka. Her body has been through a real toll, so to help her out, we put her back on puppy food for the nutrients, double portions, and as you can see, she loves her scrambled egg supplements. She needs all the help she can get and all the nutrients for producing all the milk for nursing those nine gorgeous puppies. With all the extra love and care, our brown puppy grows up to be such a lady. A lady just like her mama. It's hard to believe that just 90 days ago, the breeding process began, and our Anka gave us nine gorgeous puppies. But we need to be careful, because with those nine puppies, and all the fluids and extra organs that go with it, that represented about 27% of Anka's overall body weight. And with a quick visit to the vet the next day, Anka gets a clean bill of health, and the puppies are looking great. With their brothers and sisters nursing away, these two are already milk drunk and fast asleep. These hungry eaters and such a large litter will make sure we'll give our Anka a good 18 months rest period before we even think about trying to breed her again. All of Anka's love and attention, she produced nine healthy puppies 
that grew up to be spunky, healthy, and happy. I'm sure to shower Anka with plenty of love, and she pays it back to me tenfold. If you treat this dog right, the love and attention they pay back, and the way they lean into you and love you in return, is just beyond expression. Good morning, Hovart world. <laughs> hey, it's a uh, little after seven in the morning. Been up since about three thirty. Gave the puppies a double feeding. I uh, just got him outside here and did a little bit about 20 minutes romper room around 6 a.m. And we actually have Chris and Jim down from Minneapolis, Minnesota. They drove six hours yesterday through a snowstorm. And they stopped in last night for about a two hour puppy visit. And now they're headed back up to uh, Minnesota today. And they're gonna be here about eight and I texted them and I know they're early risers. And I was up anyway, so. They're due here any minute, and we're going to uh, do another little puppy visit. They're uh, kind of letting me know where their heart's being tugged toward. <laughs> and uh, they're really great people. Later that day, after Chris and Jim leave, it's back to routine schedule. Socialization with neighbors, outdoor roofing housing, eating schedule, and the pee pee and poo poo breaks. Right now, the puppies are just about potty trained in about six weeks. Oh, I know you're looking for food. <coughs> rawr, rawr, rawr. There's hot pink. Oh, love you. Love you. Rawr, rawr. Look at those faces. And little golden brows are coming in. Oh, the golden brows. Oh, you're loving it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, is that brown? No, that was green. The guarding force is strong in this one. Well, good morning, you Hovey lovers. It's that time of the day. It's your Hovey time. And they're your little Hovey puppies. We did a video last night, 11.15, they saw their first snow. And this is their second time. It dusted a little bit more now. But they're having a great time. We just fed them. I got the other last portion here in my hand, soak it up in warm water. They love it. They love it. They want some more of it. I'm gonna hold my camera and look at them. Ah! Quick run in here and dump the food. Bam! Puppy power! And there you have it, folks. Puppies at six weeks old, and they're eating, eating eaten. They're so cute. Well, we're down to the last two weeks, folks, and the puppies are still boing, 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 running around outside and growing strong. We're going to keep them on their schedule of feeding them and taking them outdoors for pee pee and poo poo breaks to reinforce that potty behavior. We're also going to go ahead and start putting together the puppy packs for the travel home. It helps their new homeowners get from point A to point B with some basic fixins to help the puppy in transition. We've got some more fun stories to tell as they go out and go fishing and catch a couple of bites. And then the big event is the puppies at the vet for their first vet checkup, deworming, shots, microchip, Temperature check and putting things up my butt. Oh, poor puppies. But for now, we're introducing them in new environments, 
getting a little bit more rustic in nature setting. And before you know it, it's gonna be that next year and running around the country and checking on the puppies. We wanna do reunions and see how they're doing and how they're growing. So be sure to tune in next time for Bark 101. Hey everybody, and from Kodak and I, please visit your local animal shelter first when you're looking to add a furry friend to your family. Also help control the pet population by having your dog spayed or neutered. It's right.